Now I would like to talk a little bit more about camera configuration. So if you actually go to edit, you go to configure, it, it will configure for that camera, in this case the perspective, or you can configure all. <coughs> and you, uh, you get quite a few options available. Each one of these does something a little bit different. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and slap an object in here so we can show you exactly what they do. Uh, I'm, most of these I just leave at default. Seem to work pretty well. Rotation bands are actually bands that you can use to rotate an object. So if I'm in the rotation tool here, which I'll discuss later, you can uh, use these little bands to rotate your object instead of the little uh, the little uh, the little uh, balls here. I prefer the balls. I'm just familiar with it. That's that was the original interface in Cinema 4D for some time. And there's a few different things you can decide the view or not view. And they all they all vary. ISO line editing is actually used when you're inside of a NURB object, which I will discuss a little bit later. If we bring a cube in here, we we make it edible. And we uh, go to the points mode. And notice that these points are way out here. They're the actual cube object itself. So if we disable the hyperner, we can see the cube object and removing these points right where they are. <coughs> if we go to configure all, and we decide to go to ISO line editing, those points are actually located on the sphere. So you get, I guess in a way a little bit of an idea of what you're modeling. I'm just used to not using the ISO line editing technique. It seems to work fairly well. You can see what your hard rough geometry looks like while, while you're actually seeing also what your smooth geometry looks like. So you can get a better idea of what everything looks like because if you move too far even though the points here that would be here you know these points are different and the actual reality of the matter is there this point is actually past this other point just so you know now if we go to filter we can actually um, take stuff out so take out nulls we actually had a null object in here where are they at where is that null there is a null object so if we actually have a null object we go to configure all. We can determine what we want to see and what we don't want to see. So we can actually take away the null and let's see the null disappears. We can uh, take away the hypernerve so the hypernerve isn't visible at all. <laughs> Strange object there. We can uh, take away the world axis if we'd like to get rid of that we can hide all the lights if we wanted to if we had lights in our scene get a light in our scene right quick configure all so we can do away with the lights and notice it's just it's not the actual light itself it's just the object the way the object is actually represented we can not even display the axis if we want to but that'd be a fairly difficult to use and we can get away the grid, which uh, may or may not be convenient. I don't particularly like it. It doesn't tell me what level I'm at. I tend to usually leave that on. So you got some, like, some options there available to you. And you can actually change your grid however you would like to. And then there's this, um, this, uh, this displays little things usually in the corners of your viewport. It'll actually tell you what's going on. You can uh, determine how many points you have selected on an object. So we have a total of eight points. If we want to go back to edit configure all, <coughs> we can also see our selected points. We can go to we can see edges if we want to. When we're actually in edges mode, total of 12 edges, now we have one selected. So that uh, that can be definitely useful in uh, selected end guns. Talk about end guns, I guess, probably a little bit later. 
but I think I might leave these on. That's actually usually usually pretty helpful. Also, I want you to notice that these same options are actually available to you up here in this menu. There's the filter. If we go to um, back here in the filter, we got the same options available to us here. So for access bands we can put on, or we can have them off. And we also it's also available here. And uh, you see this. We can also hide these things just the same. The whole it hide nulls, polygons, spines. So we can hide different objects like we have available here. So there's several so our options available. Also, I want you to take a look at um, back face culling. What this does is it sees through any of the back faces or pieces of geometry on your object. So if you delete a face, you notice there's nothing there, but actually the rest of the cube is there if we look around it. But since we have back face culling enabled, there's nothing there. So in essence, you can tell if there's a normal that's facing the wrong way. Notice that it's orange when it lights up. Right click. We go to reverse normals. And the normal's reversed and we can't see it. So that's very helpful to determine whether your normals are facing the right way. It's always very important for them to face the right way. Otherwise, you may get strange artifacts when you take them into a hyperdriver. Otherwise, take off back face culling. So nothing strange is happening now that we can see. That doesn't mean strange things haven't happened, or can definitely happen. And it's certainly not recommended to have a face facing the wrong way. To simply correct that, though, you can always right-click and go to Align Normals. And it will align those faces, plus any other faces that are not quite aligned correctly. Now, if you're going to be inside of this cube, then you want the normals to be facing how you're viewing. You would just go to Reverse Normals, Reverse All These Normals. Then you can just see in the inside.